If you've ever plugged your numbers into an online calorie calculator and trusted the numbers that it gave you, that might be exactly why you're not seeing results. Most calorie calculators rely on averages and estimates, and they don't often account for things like your unique body composition, how active you are outside of your designated workouts, and even factors like medications. This could mean that they're off by even a few hundred calories, and that could be the reason why your progress has stalled. That's why in this video, I'm gonna walk you through how to find your real maintenance calories or your TDEE step-by-step -step so that you can stop guessing and finally start making progress towards your goals. This is the second video of my calories and macros made simple playlist. So before you guys even figure out your maintenance calories or track any food, you really need to go back and watch this video first to determine which phase you should be in right now so that you could ultimately reach your long-term goal. The link for that video is going to be in the description below. If you've already watched that video and figured out which phase you should be in, let's Let's move on to breaking down what TDEE even is. So your TDEE or your total daily energy expenditure is the total amount of calories that your body expends or burns in a single day. TDEE, which other than just being really hard for me to say, is made up of four parts. And the first one is your BMR or your basal metabolic rate. And this is going to account for 70% of your total daily energy expenditure. These are the calories that your body burns at rest to keep itself alive and functioning. Next, we have non-exercise activity thermogenesis, which is also referred to as NEAT, and I feel like a lot of people have heard of NEAT before, but that's going to account for about 15% of your total daily energy expenditure. These are going to be the calories burned from everyday movements, like talking on the phone, walking to your car, or even fidgeting. Essentially, it's the calories that you burn via movement that is outside or separate from your planned activity. Then we have the thermic effect of food, or TEF, and this is gonna account for about 10% of your total daily energy expenditure. These are the calories that your body is gonna burn digesting and absorbing the food that you eat. For example, if you eat 2000 calories a day, about 10% of that total caloric intake or around 200 calories will be burned digesting your food. And then lastly, we have exercise associated thermogenesis or EAT, and this is gonna be about 5% of your total daily energy expenditure. So these are the calories that you burn during intentional or planned exercise. And I'm sure for a lot of you, this is a lot less of a factor than you probably thought it would be. And it's the reason that myself as a fitness professional will say you cannot outwork a bad diet because you will likely burn out before you're able to burn off all of the calories that you ate throughout the day. So when you eat roughly the same amount that you burn each day, your weight is gonna stay pretty stable. And that's what we call your maintenance calories. And this number is so crucial because it's gonna be the foundation for every phase that you enter into. So if you want to lose body fat and you're gonna enter into a calorie deficit, you're gonna eat below that number. Or if you wanna maximize the amount of muscle gains that you can make and you wanna enter into a bulk, you're gonna eat above that number. I think you guys get the point, but it's easy to see how if you don't know this number, everything else is gonna be guesswork. All right, so now that you understand what TDE is, let's talk about how to find your true maintenance calories because most calculators are only gonna get you so far. This is what I have my clients do, and I feel like it's super simple and it's gonna get you a lot further and a more accurate representation than any formula alone is gonna give you. Step one is to use a TDE calculator to get a rough starting point. And I want you to think of this more as a best estimate and not a forever number that we have to perfectly abide by. Step two, for the next seven to 10 days, I want you to eat at that calorie target give or take up to about 50 calories and track your weight daily. Ideally, when you're tracking your weight, you're doing this after a long fasted state. So after you wake up and it's around the same time and same conditions every time that you weigh yourself. Step three, at the end of that seven to 10 days, calculate your average weight. Weight naturally fluctuates on a day-to-day -day basis for so many reasons. And it's not the best indicator of whether we're at true maintenance or not. But if we take that average from that seven to 10 days, that's going to give us a better idea of whether you stayed the same weight, lost weight, or gained weight. When you calculate that average and compare it to what your normal weight usually is, if it stays about the same, like give or take about a half pound, 
you have found your maintenance calories and we could pretty much assume that that is what your true maintenance is. If you found that your calories trended down, you're likely in a calorie deficit, so you would wanna bump your calories up a bit. And I've found that adjusting by about 10% of your current caloric intake usually works pretty well. So for example, if I was at 2000 calories and I lost a pound, I'm gonna adjust by about 10% of that 2000 calories, which is gonna put me at about 2200 calories. The final scenario is is that your weight trended up by one or more pounds. So that's gonna mean that you're in a calorie surplus and all I would do with that is then adjust by that 10% again. So we would lower the calories by about 10% of your current calorie intake. If you wanna go the extra mile and really confirm that you are at your true maintenance calories after having to make that 10% adjustment, you could then stay at that new calorie intake for about three to four days, and then again, continue to monitor your body weight. Now, before you start your seven and 10 day maintenance test, I wanna go over a few common mistakes that can completely skew your results. Number one is in consistent tracking. If you have some days where you're tracking everything super diligently and then other days where you're only tracking one or two out of the five meals that you ate, it's going to be almost impossible to find what your true maintenance calories really is. So if you're going to commit to doing this test, make sure that you pick a time period that works best for you where you could truly commit to tracking everything as diligently as possible for those seven to 10 days. The second most common mistake is eyeballing portions. If you're guessing how much you're eating instead of weighing out or measuring your food, there's a really high chance that you're going to be off by a few hundred calories, especially when you're adding things like oil or nut butters or creams to your food or drinks. So for this short time period, make sure that you're being more precise than normal. When it's the most appropriate for you, you could always go back to a more looser style of tracking. The third most common mistake is that you are changing your habits specifically for this test. If you know you're going to do this test, don't suddenly add in a few extra thousand steps or extra workouts in because that is not going to be a representative of your true maintenance calories. The goal is to capture what your body burns on an average week for you right now. So to sum that up, you need to stay consistent, track accurately, and don't change your routine just for the sake of this test. If you could do that, at the end of that week, you will have a number that is actually useful for you in building a plan moving forward. So now that you know what your maintenance calories are, you're ready to start making some smart adjustments to that caloric intake to help you reach your goals. In the next video of this series, I'll show you how to set your calories for your specific goal, whether that be fat loss, building as much muscle as possible, or just trying to maintain the results that you currently have. So make sure that you guys are subscribed to my channel so that you don't miss that video when it drops. And if you need help figuring this out for your body and your goals, I do offer one-on-one -on -one strategy calls where we can work all of this out together. We'll go over your current habits, current calorie intake, and how to adjust your nutrition so that you could start making progress towards your goal. If you guys are interested in that, you can learn more info via the link in the description below. All right, guys, so take what you learned today and go find your real maintenance calories and then meet me back here for the next video so that we could start to build out your plan. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you soon.